Hey friends, what's up? Welcome back to Babylon Tama. Today we're starting Daf Ches, Daf Hey, Rabbi Masech the Megillah. Friends, um, <laughs> Daf Ches is a funny little page. Um, <laughs> kind of <laughs> like, <coughs> oh man, <laughs> come on, cough, go away. Um, yeah, like kind of technical things, but we get into like Zavi kind of things. I feel like we haven't. I had so many Zavi kind of things recently. Zav, Mitzora, technical kind of stuff. Friends, let's just do it. Well, we're going to start in Davches and all, all <coughs> excuse me, all the way at the top. It says the Mishnah, let's try the deep breath thing. Well, that worked. Maybe for now. All right, but then it makes me sleepy. Ah, you can never win. You have a cough, so you take a deep breath. You take a deep breath, then you get tired. So there's no uh, no. So Rivin says to Shimon, "I'm not going to get any benefit from you." That's one option. Or Ruvain says to Shimon, "I'm not going to get benefit from any food from you." All right. All right. So the only difference is, for example, um, if you can you walk into the fellow's house, right? So Ruvain says to Shimon, right? Shimon, I'm not getting any benefit from you. So can Ruvain walk onto Shimon's property? So if he says to Shimon, I'm not getting any benefit from you at all. So no, he can't walk onto Shimon's property. If he says, Shimon, I'm not going to get any food from you. So so then, all right, walk on his property. What do you want? Just don't eat it. <laughs> all right. Um, or, for example, if you have a vessel that you don't use for food. So you have a vessel that you don't use for food. So if, 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 if Reuven says, I'm not getting any benefit from you whatsoever. So that vessel is not usable. But if he says, I don't want to get any benefit from your food. So if you have a vessel that's not has nothing to do with food. So then um, you can get benefit from it. What do you want me to tell you? However, with regard to vessels that you do use for cooking, right? Let's say you have a piece of pot, you use it for making chicken soup. So then, so then in both cases, whether he says, I'm not going to get any uh, benefit from you whatsoever, or whether he says that I'm not going to get any benefit from your food, um, that pot is going to be off limits if it is a pot that's used for um, food. Let's go weiter. Um, Drisas Aregel um, so he said that if Ruven says to Shimon I'm not going to get any benefit from you whatsoever so he can't even like walk onto his property but one second why can't Ruven walk onto Shimon's property okay, Ruven says to Shimon Shimon I'm not getting any benefit from you whatsoever Ruven is no longer allowed to walk into Shimon's property why? Shimon doesn't care people don't really care so Amarav Says Rabbi Almani Rabbi Eliezer, this is Rabbi Eliezer, the Amr Vitor also Rabbi Mudra no. The Rabbi Eliezer's opinion is that being Mavatar, saying, meh, I don't care, do whatever you want, doesn't work when it comes to a fellow who's Mudra no, a fellow who says he's not going to get any benefit. Therefore, if Ruven says to Shimon, Shimon, I'm not getting any benefit from you whatsoever, the fact that Shimon doesn't care if Ruven walks on his property is irrelevant. If Ruven says he's not getting any benefit from Shimon, so then he shouldn't even walk on his property. All right, what do you want me to tell you? Says the Mishnah, Friends, we've seen this before, that there's no difference between a nether and a nedava. Who can tell me what's, what, what's a nether, what's a nedava? A nether is when a fellow says, I'm going to bring a korban. So when a fellow says, I'm going to bring a korban, and then he sets aside a korban, and that korban dies or something like that, so he didn't bring a Corbin. So he's got to set aside a different one and bring that one. He says he's going to bring a Corbin. Bring a Corbin. Get it done. Now, um, that's as opposed to if a fellow says, I'm going to bring this animal, Ruvain the animal. The fellow says, I'm going to bring Ruvain the animal as a Corbin. And then Ruvain the animal dies. So he doesn't have to bring a replacement because um, he said he's going to bring Ruvain the animal. Ruvain the animal died. So... He's obviously not bringing Reuven the animal anymore. So he doesn't have to bring any of them. So in Ben Adarim the Nedavos, there's no difference between a nether when a fellow says that I'm going to bring a korban versus an Nedav when a fellow says I'm going to bring this animal as a korban. When it comes to a nether 
When he says, I'm going to bring a Corbin, so then if the one that he sets aside dies, well, then he has to set aside a, a different one because he didn't do what he said. He didn't bring a Corbin yet. When it comes to Nidava, when a fellow says, I'm going to bring Reuven the animal as, as a Corbin, if Reuven the animal dies, well, he can't bring it as a Corbin, so he doesn't, he's potter. Holding in Bata'acher is Eviz Eshavin. When it comes to Bata'acher, who can tell me what Bata'acher is? That when a fellow sets aside a Corbin, an animal as a Corbin, so, he, uh, we saw, we've seen him, Sechta Beitzah, Sechta Rosh Hashanah, maybe also, that is a big machlokas about how to define Bata Acher. But essentially the point is, don't take too long to bring your Korban. Whether it's one festival, three festivals, five festivals, maybe, whatever it is. Basically, you have a certain time limit that you have to bring your Korban within and don't dilly dally. So, with regard to dilly dallying on <coughs> offering your Korban, both a neder and a nedava are the same. Whether a fellow says, I'm going to bring a korban, or whether a fellow says, I'm going to, I'm going to bring this animal as a korban, um, in terms of bal ta'acher, that lav, so it's the same. Ezu neder, what, what is a neder? Omer olai ola, a fellow says, I'm going to bring a korban ola. He doesn't specify ruva in the animal. Ezu nedava, what is a nedava? Omer zo ola, a fellow says that this animal, ruva in the animal, is the Korban Ola. Well then, um, what's the difference between a nether and a nedavit? Nedar meso anignivu o avdu. But when it comes to a nether, a fellow says, I'm going to bring a Korban. So if the animal that he then sets aside, it dies or it gets stolen or it gets lost, chai bachrayuson, so then you have to replace it. Nedar nedavis, whereas when it comes to a Korban nedavit, when a fellow says that, Reuven the animal, I'm going to bring you as a Korban, so then, meso nignivu o avdu enu chay bachrayusan. If the roof in the animal dies or gets stolen or gets lost, you don't have to bring a separate one because the other one that you would set aside isn't roof in the animal. Roof in the animal died. So, so therefore, you're not chay <coughs> to replace it. We know immediately how do we know this? The Tanu Rabbanus, the rabbi said, v'nitzlo l'chaper olu, that it will uh, appease him and, uh, um, um, l'chaper. What's l'chaper again? I always forget. To atone for the fellow. Rib Shimon Omer says, Rib Shimon, Esra Olov Chai Bachrayuso, that which is upon him. I guess he says, Hare Olai, Sen Yachai Bachrayus, Veshenu Olov, if it's not upon him, Sen Enu Chai Bachrayuso, he doesn't need to, um, set aside, you know, he doesn't have to follow up with another one. My mash, my harulun, and after this pasuk, Omer Bitsuk Baravdimi says, Rabitsuk Baravdimi, came into Omer, Al Olai, right, a fellow says, upon me, that it is incumbent upon me, to bring a uh, korban, command the toyna kis vedami. It's like it is on his um, shoulder, and he uh, and, and he needs to bring this korban. He said he's going to bring a korban. Has to bring a korban, even if the one that he sets aside dies. Bring a different one. Okay, now things get exciting. New Mishnah ain't been. <coughs> excuse me. New Mishnah ain't been zavara shteri is the royal shalish el korban huwa. That there's no difference between a Zav who sees Ziva twice versus a Zav who sees Ziva three times except for a Korban. Friends, what does this mean? What's a Zav? Who can tell me what a Zav is? A Zav is a fellow who sees some Ziva. Uh, I don't know, we're about two years into Babylon Talmud. I used to not know what Ziva is. I still don't know what Ziva is. What do you want me to tell you? It's uh, something that comes out of a man's body and it's not semen. It's Ziva. What do you want me to tell you? I don't know what it is. But, um, Uncle Ponim, if a fellow sees this stuff that I don't know what it is twice, so then he's a Zav. And if he sees it three times, then he's really a Zav. Ella Corbin. So the difference is that once, when, when the fellow sees the Ziva stuff twice, so he becomes Tame as a Zav. A Zav is Mitami Mishkov Moshev. He's an Avatuma. Um so now if he sees this Ziva stuff a third time, so then he also in a different in addition to being a Zav, so then he has to bring a Corbin as well. So so and the way that this works is if a fellow sees Ziva twice, either on the same day or in two days or three times, either on the same day or in two days or in three days, but it has to be consecutive. You can't have I don't think you can have like one day, then a break, and then another two days. We have to be like one a day for three days, or three three times over the course of two days, or three times in one day, whatever you want me to tell you. So, so, that's that. 
<coughs> excuse me, fellow sees Ziva twice, becomes a Zav, third, third time becomes a really big Zav. Says the Gemara, Halina and Mishka Vumoshev, but when it comes to Mishka Vumoshev, who, <coughs> who could tell me what Mishka Vumoshev is? Mishka Vumoshev is that you have a fellow, he's a Zav. Okay, exciting. Now, what it means is, let's say you had even like 10 mattresses stacked up on one another and he jumps onto the top one. So you'll say on the one end, well, he's only touching the top mattress. But because of this thing called Tumas Mishkov Umoshav, the Tumah of like something that he rests upon. So the Allah is that this Zav who jumps onto the top mattress, all of the mattresses below him that are supporting him also become Tame, not just to be a Rish on the Tumah, but to be an Ava Tumah like him. That's what Mishkov Umoshav is. That all of these mattresses, even the ones that he's not directly touching, but that he's sort of is, is supporting his weight, all of them become an avatuma like him. Halina and Mishkov Moshev, when it comes to these um, things to like sit on and lie on, Usfira Shiva, as well as the need to count seven days. Because how do you stop being a Zav? Oh, we didn't talk about that. How do you like become unzavi? So you become Zavi because you see this Zavi stuff. How do you become unzavi? You become unzavi by not seeing any more Zavi stuff. So, I don't know, a fellow became a Zav, saw this stuff twice, and then he has seven days where he doesn't see any of the Ziva stuff. So now he becomes Tameh. So, regarding Mishka Moshe, regarding the requirement to ha- count seven days without seeing any Ziva, Zev is Ashavin, whether you are a <coughs> Zav Kotin or a Zav Gadol, whether you've seen Ziva twice or whether you've seen Ziva three times, um, um, you have to count seven days and you, you know, if you matame the Mishka of Moshe. Menanimili, how do we know this? Titanarabon, take as the, um, as we, uh, as we learned in the price. Right? How do we know that regarding Tuma, both, uh, uh, Zav Baal Shterios as well as Zav Baal Shalashrios are the same, yet with regard to Corbin, only a Zav Shal Baal, Baal Shalashrios brings a Corbin. The Tana Rabbanon, as the rabbi started, Rabbi Simai Omer, who asked, says Rabbi Simai, Monakos of Shtayim Vikro Tomei, Shalosh Vikro Tomei. We have two sec- separate psukim. One pasuk mentions the word, right, the, the root of uh, Ziva uh, twice and calls him Tomei. And the other pasuk mentions Ziva three times in it and calls him Tomei. So, okay, it's that, so what's Pshad? How come in one pasuk it mentions Ziva twice, the other pasuk mentions Ziva three times? What's it coming to teach us? So, Shtayim the Tumah of Yishalosh L'Korbim. What it's teaching us is that, well, in the context when you, you see Ziva twice, so then it means you're Tameh, but if you see Ziva three times in addition to being Tameh, you have to also bring a Korbim. Ve'ema Shtayim the Tumah Velo L'Korbim. For one second, maybe I'll say that what it means is that when you see Ziva twice, so now you're Tameh, you don't have to bring a Korbim, but Shalosh L'Korbim Velo L'Tumah. And when if you see a third time ziva, so now all of a sudden you have to bring a korban, but you are no longer tummy. So we say that can't be. Right? All right. We said, well, that's not really going to work. Because once he saw two already, he becomes tummy. So when he sees the ziva a third time, what released him from his initial tumma? We can't say that when you see ziva twice. So you become Tomei, and when you see it a third time, you're no longer Tomei, but instead you have to bring a Corbin. Who made him on Tomei? So <laughs> you can't say that if he sees Ziva twice, then it means he's Tomei, and if he sees it three times, then it means that he's uh, not Tomei, but he has to bring a Corbin. You can't say that, because who released him from the initial Tumor? The Amor Shtayim, the Corbin, the Lola Tumor, but what? Wait, is, wait up. Maybe I'll say that. When you see Ziva twice, so then you have to bring a Corbin, but you're not yet Tomei. The uh, shalosh, but if he sees Ziva a third time now, af the tuma, where am I? Vemish time the korban velo the tuma shalosh af the tuma ah, and then when you see the ziva a third time, so then in addition you have to bring a, you, in addition you become tame as well. So we say lo sagadaitech, you can't say that. The Tanya, as we talk a little in the brisa, the chipur all of akoyin lifne Hashem mizovo. Now the pasuk says that. When the Zav becomes Tor, because he hasn't seen any more of the Ziva, so then it says, that the Kohen will bring a Korban and will atone for him before God from his, right, Mizovo is the important word, from his Ziva. 
right? Mem is a miut. It's 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 limiting. Miktsa zav mevin korban u miktsa zav ne mevin korban. Some zavs need to bring a korban. Other zavs don't bring a korban. Okay, so what does it mean? Well, shalosh mevi shtaim inu mevi. That if a fellow sees ziva three times, then he brings a korban. If he sees twice, he doesn't bring a korban. So what do we see? That if a fellow becomes um um uh, sees ziva twice, becomes tame. If he sees ziva a third time, so at that point he has to bring a <laughs> korban. Or inu ella ra a beis mevi ra shalosh inu mevi. Or is it possible that maybe if he sees ziva twice, then he brings a korban? But if he sees uh, ziva three times, then itaka does not bring a korban. Amrat ad shalora ashtaim ra ad shalora shalosh ra ashtaim. So we say, well, that can't be because if he has to bring a korban when he uh, has seen ziva twice, so then how did, why would it go away when he has to when he sees ziva um, three times? Now says the Gemara, Vitzdich to Absimai, Vitzdich Mizova. So we need both of these, uh, opinions, right? We need the opinion, of, <coughs> we need the, to be learned, to be taught from Absimai that the Pasuk, one Pasuk says Ziva twice, the other Pasuk says Ziva three times. What's the difference? The difference is that the third time you have to bring a Corbin. And we also need that second, um, right, the, right, right this Bryce that says, that mizovo, that only some zavs have to bring a korban. We say it, that's if he sees uh, ziva three times. So the imid Rab Simai have him in a kikushan, because if it was like Rab Simai who says that we learn out from you know if the pasuk it says if he sees ziva twice versus the pasuk it says if he sees ziva three times, well then we have our question that maybe when you see ziva once you have to bring a korban, but you're not yet tummy. Then when you see ziva I'm sorry, if you see Ziva twice, you have to bring a Corbin, but you're not yet Tameh. And if you see Ziva three times, so then maybe in addition to bringing a Corbin, you are also a Tameh. So therefore, we need Kamash Malon, Mizovo. Therefore, we have to say that no, Mizovo, that only some uh, Zavs bring a Corbin. Not that uh, when if you see two times, so then you bring a Corbin, and then a third time you additionally are Tameh. Because Mizovo, in the context of bringing a Corbin, says Mizovo, which is exclusionary, which is limiting, that only some Zavs bring a Corbin, not all Zavs. The Mizovo, and if all we had was Mizovo, that okay, fine, so like some Zavs have to bring a Corbin, but the Yodaina I still wouldn't know, like, okay, how many times do you have to see Ziva for their different Corbonis? So Kamash Malan do Absimai, that's why we have the Psukim from Absimai that Adavka says one Pasuk says Ziva twice, so the Pasuk says Ziva three times to say that, well, when you see Ziva twice, so then you're Tommy, but you don't yet bring a Corbin. When you, when you see uh, Ziva a third time, at that point, you now have to bring a Corbin. All right. Masha Domrit, Mizovo the Drasha Ua. So now that we learn out from Mizovo that it's some kind of exclusion, that, uh, <coughs> okay, well, if you learn, right, it says Mizovo. To teach that um, the third time that you see Ziva, you have to now bring a Corbin. Okay, well, if we had so much success uh, from Mizovo when it comes to uh, the Corbin, so what do we learn out from Mizovo when it comes to, right? The Pazak says, When a Zav becomes Tahor, <laughs> becomes pure from his Ziva, he's no longer a Zav. So then, my derash tebe. What do you learn out from mizovo in that context? So umi baile lich detanya. Well, that is needed for the following brisa. Ua, what is it saying? The brisa is exciting. Tchiter azov lich sheyispok lich sheyifsok mizovo mizovo v'lo mizovo v'nogo. Ua, that sounds like fun. So again, tchiter azov that when the zov fellow becomes tahor lich sheyifsok mizovo. When he stops seeing Ziva, Mizovo v'lo Mizovo v'nogo. But not from his Ziva and his Taras. Friends, this sounds like a very schwerer situation to be in. A fellow, he's a Zov and he, he's got Taras also. Friends, that sounds very schwer. So what we say is that, well, so if after seven days, right, he no longer sees Ziva, but he's still a uh, Mitzorah, so we say that at that point, since he went seven days without seeing any ziva, so that's it. He's, he's no longer going to be a zav anymore, right? So you, it's not like, you know, you don't have to wait until you're done with the ziva and the Mitzorah stuff. Once already you count seven days without seeing ziva, you're no longer a zav, mazel tov. 
Mizov of the Sofer, and it says that then he counts. Limed alzov bal shte reis shetaun sviras shiva. It teaches that even a zov who sees ziva twice needs to uh, count seven days. And it's not just a, a zov who sees um, 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 uh, ziva three times needs to count seven days, but even a zov who sees ziva twice needs to count seven days. Right, that the kilu mizovo, right, even though he's not like a full fledged <laughs> zav, he's only kind of a partial zav, right, he saw, sees Eva twice, he still needs to count seven days. Valo dinu, perfect the Gemara, one second. Isn't it logical? In Mitami Mishko Vumosha, lo yeton spheres shiva. Well, if already, right, we said that the fellow is going to be Mitame Mishko Vumosha, right, the fellow sees Ziva twice. So now he's Mitame, right, he makes uh, these things that he sits on, Tame. And these things become an avatoma like him. So then, if he's a zav, then obviously he's going to have to count seven days. Why, why would I think otherwise? So, Shomer is Yom Kineged Yom Tochiach. Well, because I could bring you a proof from a Shomer is Yom Kineged Yom. Who knows what a Shomer is Yom Kineged Yom is? Shomer is Yom Kineged Yom is that the way that Nida Mida Oraisa works is that if a woman sees uh, Dam Nida, so then she becomes Nida for seven days. And then the following 11 days is this... Um, um, 11 day period in which if she sees um, uh, Dom on um, you know, three consecutive days so then she becomes a Zava and if she sees Dom Kilu one time so then the question is well um, is this Dom Ziva or is it just you know nothing to be concerned about so if she sees Dom on, on one day in these 11 days so then she has to kind of wait you know, she's like pending the next day to see if there's uh, more dam to see if she, you know, will possibly be a zava. Um, and therefore, when a woman is a shomeris yom kineged yom, that she kind of sees dam one time in this 11-day sort of interim period, so then shemitama mishkov umoshav, that she is also mitama mishkov umoshav, anything that she sits on, ve'enotu nesvira shiva, but obviously she doesn't need to count seven days because... Um, you know, this is the, uh, she just waits one day, right? So, so in that case, so we see that even though she's Mitami Mishkov Moshev, she doesn't actually have to count seven days. So, Va'af Ata, Va'af Ata, and therefore don't be so surprised that I'm suggesting Alzeh, when it comes to this Zav fellow that he, that he sees Ziva twice, Shaf Bish Mitami Mishkov Moshev, that even though when he sits on these couches and stuff, he's gonna be Mitami all of them, there'll be an Avatuma, Lo yehi ton sphere shiva. I might think that he does not need to count seven days in order to become tar tamulomar mizovo v'safar. Therefore, it says from his ziva and he counts mixas zovo v'safar limed alzav v'ashteriil shetaun sphere shiva. Right, that even a partial zav that he's <laughs> seen ziva twice, he still needs to count seven days, and only afterwards he becomes tar. So now Omale Rapapa Labai. So now Rapapa asks a Gvalu Gakasha Tabai. Friends, you ready? Maybe you were thinking this already. Maishna Hai Mizovo Demai Bebe Zovbal Shteri Eos Umai Shna Hai Mizovo Demimait Be Zovbal Shteri Eos. Friends, it's a Gvalu Gakasha, right? Let's read it again. Maishna Hai Mizovo. How come from this Mizovo, the one that we just learned out when he's Tahor, right? It says Vchitar Zov Mizovo Vesofar. From which we learn out demar bebe zav bal shterios. From which we're essentially um, including a zav who's seen ziva twice. Right? We're saying mizovo v'sofar. Even somebody who only has seen kind of like partial ziva, he sees ziva twice. Well, he's got to count seven days without seeing ziva. So we're including even a zav who has seen ziva only twice. Umayshna hai mizovo. And yet, when it comes to offering a korban, right, it says, So we say, from Zovo, only some Zovs offer a korban, i.e., excluding a Zov who's seen Ziva only twice. He does not bring a korban. So, how come it says, Mizovo, Vesofa, we're including a Zov who sees uh, Ziva twice? And when we say, Mizovo, we're excluding a Zov. Who's seen Ziva twice for bringing a korban? So is it inclusive, exclusive? What's the deal? 
So Omerle, so uh, Abai Taka responds to Apope, Isakadaitech Hailim Ute Hu De Oso. If it answer, if it enters your mind to say that this, when it comes to um, the counting, that we're coming to exclude um, Azov who has seen Ziva twice. So Lishto Kromine. So it shouldn't say in the Pasuk Mizovo at all. It should just say, right, Vichiyitor Azov Visafar. It does, right, when the Zav becomes Tower, so he Take counts. Right, Vichitema Asya Medina. Vichitema Asya Medina. And if you are going to say that I don't Taka need this Pasuk because I could just know it on my own. That I can just logically argue. Well, if he's a Zav and Baal Shteri Eos, and he's Tomei Mishkov Moshev, so Mamele should have to count seven days. So, Shomeris Yom Kenegri Yom Tochiach. Well, in Shomeris Yom Kenegri Yom, we said can sort of disprove that, that she um, is Metami Mishkov Moshev, and yet she does not have to count seven days. Bechitema Hami Boile Mizovo Velo Mizovo Venogo. And if you're going to say, well, this is needed, <coughs> that, right, to learn out Mizovo, but not also, um, Minogo, right, as we said, that if he's a Zov and a Mitzora, so once he has seven days without seeing any Ziva, he's good to go. Even though he's still a Mitzora. Right, so why does it have to say Mizovo? Right, why can't it just say Vichit or Azov? What do we learn out from Mizovo? So Alzov Limir Alzov Bal Shteri Il Shaton Sphir Shiva. So it teaches that if you have a Zov who sees Ziva twice, so Itake needs to count uh, seven days. Alright, what do you want me to tell you? You have a Zov sees Ziva twice, he has to count seven days. Alright. Fine. Mastisan, so now we get to Taka New Mishnah, in be Mitsura Muzgul Mitsura Muchlot Elf Priya Ufrimo. Alright. Well, what's the difference between a Mitzorah Muskar and a Mitzorah Muchlat? Uh, who could tell me? So basically a fellow, he sees uh, some kind of skin situation. It doesn't sound very fun. So he sees some kind of a skin situation. So the coin says, all right, go quarantine for uh, seven days. All right, so he quarantines for seven days. And then that's what's called Mitzorah Muskar. He's just in quarantine, right? It's like, you know, you get off the plane, you get your Corona test. And you go to the quarantine hotel for a little bit while we figure out what to do with you. And then we get the test results, we figure out, all right, you know, do you have coronavirus or not? So you're also, you get epis on your skin, you go to quarantine hotel, uh, although it's kind of the opposite, you kind of leave, well, not the opposite, but you basically got to leave the camp and stuff, and then until we can figure out <laughs> what to do with you. That's what's called a Mitsura Muskar, that he's kind of just like out on the side waiting. The Mitzvah Mukhlat, Mitzvah Mukhlat is that after kind of the results come in and, uh, you know, a week later the coin examines it and it uh, turns out to be an actual Tsaras. So now you're certainly a Mitzvah. El Aprio Ufrimo. The difference is, um, you know, you have to, you're not, get, not able to get a haircut and you have to render your garments. That if you're certainly a Mitzvah, then you gotta, <laughs> you gotta have wild hair. And you gotta rend your <laughs> garments. But if it's mature muskur, if you're just kinda of quarantining, so you don't have to do that stuff. In mintar mitochesker, the tar mitochechlet, um, now, the difference between a fellow who after his initial seven days, it turns out that it's not saras, versus a fellow who had saras, actually, and then became tower from it. So, tiglachas vitsiparim. The difference is that when you were actually a mitzorah, and now you become tower, so then you have to, uh, sh you know, shave your hair and you have to bring these, uh, birds. Alright, but if you were just kind of quarantining and then it turned out that, that you're not a Mitzora, so then, so then you don't have to cut your hair and you don't need to bring these, uh, birds. Zok the Gemara says the Gemara, Holin Shiluach Vituma Zev Zeshoven. Ua. Well, with regard to the fact that <laughs> a Mitzora needs to be sent out of the camp and that, uh, <coughs> and that they become, uh, Tomei and stuff like that. So then, um, both the Mitzor Musgur and the Mitzor Muchlot are the same in that respect. How do we know that a Mitzor 
that the you know mitzor muchlot needs to um, uh, make his hair wild and rend his garments, whereas mitzor muskur does not. So the Tani of Shmuel by Yitzchok Hamid Rav Huna Huwa, the Rav Shmuel by Yitzchok taught before Rav Huna. The Tiara Cohen Mispachasi, okay, that if after the seven days, so the Cohen looks at his uh, fun little thing on his skin and he says, Ah, it's just a Mispachas, it's nothing. So he's Tower. Mechibis Begoda Vitoher. So it says that he washes his clothes Vitoher, and it is. Tower. It doesn't say v'yitar, and it doesn't say and then they will be tower. It says v'tayer. It is tower. Tower mipriya ufrima demeikar kilu. It it's saying that all along, um, you know, we we, we it's, it's 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 with regard to priya and frima making your hair wild and and rending your garments that that does not need to right it's v'tayer. It is pure from it, which we're learning to mean that kilu. The whole time you didn't have to grow, you know, make your hair wild and rend your garments. So, all right. Omele Rove. Now, Rove says to Roshmo by Yitzchok, but let me ask you a kasha. Elameata. Gabe Zov. Ua. What about our friend the Zov? The Chsiv is the Pasuk says, the Chibes begod of It says by a Zov that he is, you know, when he becomes Taurus and he washes his clothing and he becomes Taur. Also, my vitahir meikar ika. If we're saying that vitahir means that it was tahor all along, how does that apply to our friend the Zav? When it says mechibes begad vitahir that he rents his garments and becomes tahor, how does that apply to a Zav? What about a Zav was tahor the whole time? Ella rather says Rove tahor hashta militame klecheres behesed. When it comes to a Zav. What it means that Azov is a special kind of fellow. That he can be metamic lecheres behesed. If a Zov moves a, 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 um, a vessel, so then it becomes tummy. Even if he didn't touch it per se, but he moved it, so then it becomes, <laughs> then the, <laughs> the vessel becomes tummy. So now, once the Zov becomes tar, and he goes, so let's say on the, the seventh day, uh, he doesn't see any of the Ziva stuff, and he goes to the mikvah on the seventh day, and then, after coming out of the mikvah on the seventh day, he moves some earthenware vessel, and then, lo and behold, he sees some more ziva. Messes up the whole thing. Which means that, oh, I guess at the time that he touched the earthenware vessel, he wasn't technically tower yet, because, you know, he ended up later on seeing ziva, which messed up the whole counting thing. He's got to count another seven days. But nonetheless, the chilish of vitaher, what we learn about from vitaher, is that after he goes to the mikvah on the seventh day, if he, that, anything that he touched, anything that he moved, um, during that period, even if he ends up later on seeing more ziva, that stuff will remain tahor. Afagab the other chazi, even though he ends up seeing more ziva that day, lo mitami the these things that he moved do not become tame retroactively. That's what we learn about from vitaher, achinami. Also, when it comes to our friend the mitzora, tahor hashta mitatami bevia the mafreya. What it means is that it becomes, it means that once this fellow becomes a uh, Tahor, right, he, he was quarantining for a week and now he becomes Tahor, it means that now uh, anything, right, so a, a Mitzorah, when a Mitzorah goes into the house, everything in the house becomes Tommy. However, once uh, he's, uh, but no longer, uh, right, the coin says, okay, this is nothing, it's just a Mispacha, so then at that point, if he goes into the house, it doesn't become tummy. If later on it spreads and it becomes like a problem, so then still, anything that in that interim period, um, you know, when he was going into houses and stuff, they don't become tummy. All right. Hello, I'm Rav Okay, fine. So going back to the original question, how do we know that somebody who's um, tummy, right, Mitzor Musgur, how do we know that um, he doesn't require growing out his hair and rending his garments? So Elo Amarava, or making his hair wild and rending his garments. So Elo Amarava says, Rav Meochov Mir Vatsaru Asher Boa Nega. Right, the Pasuk says that the fellow Vatsaru Asher Boa Nega, the fellow, the fellow who himself has the, the Nega, the God of you, Frum Roshi Aparu, so he's, you gotta rend his garments and his hair has gotta be wild. So, Vatsaru Asher Boa Nega, the fellow that the, uh, that the, that the Tsaras is, is, is in him. Somebody whose tsaras is dependent on him, 
as opposed to this fellow, right? Here is a fellow. He, he wasn't. He wasn't decided to be a mitzvah yet, right? He, he's in quarantine, so his purification is based on the number of days. He's just got to wait seven days. Hopefully, nothing will change, and then it'll become tar. So it's really a matter of time, as opposed to uh, somebody who's actually a, a, a mitzvah. So it's more than just time. It's actually something needs to happen in his body. He has to stop. He has to, you know, he has to get rid of this uh, tzara stuff. So therefore, when it says so, in discussing. And Priya Ufimo, in discussing having wild hair and rending your garments, so it says Vatsuasha Boanega, the the fellow who the there will be a, a, a tsaras in him to the exclusion of uh, a a um a musgur where it's dependent on time as opposed to his actual body. Amale Abai, Sabai says to Rafa, El Meata, Blmeasia Kasha, Koyemeasha Nega Anega Bo Yitmo. When it says that um, all of the days that the that the tsaras is in him, he will become tam. And we should tsaraito tuliya begufo who the tone shiluach v'shein tsaraito tuliya begufo in tone in tone shiluach. So are you going to suggest right? Because that pasuk right that 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 pasuk says that all the time that the fellow is tam, he's got to leave the, the 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 camp, right? You have a fellow who's, he's he's got tsaras, he's got to leave the camp. And if we're saying that bo means based on his um, uh, body as a right, i.e. a tummy muchlat as opposed to right, mitzvah muchlat as opposed to mitzvah, mitzvah musker. So then, when we say that whenever the the um, all the days that the tsaras is bo in him, and we're saying that that means begufo, he has to leave the camp. Well then, me So does that mean that somebody who the tsaras is based on his body needs to get sent out of the camp? I.e. Um, mitzora mus, uh, muchlat, which ain't saraito to li begufo ain't ton shiluach. But if the saras is not based on his body, it's not purified based on his body, but rather based on a, the passing of time, i.e. mitzora musker, maybe then he would not need to be sent out of the, uh, camp. If you're going to say, yeah, that's true. But one second, our Mishnah had said, that the only difference between, um, a, 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 a Mitzorah who's quarantining versus a Mitzorah who's, who, who's diagnosed. So the Priya Ufrima, the only difference is, grow up, mate, right, your hair being wild and rending your garments. So they Shiluach, the Tamuya Bibia, but, with regard to the requirement to leave the camp and that when he goes into the house, he makes everything tummy, zevizeshavan, these things are the same. So therefore, how could Rava be saying that Bo means, you know, essentially a Mitzorah Mukhlat if that can't be correct in the context of um, having to leave the camp because that even applies to Mitzorah Muskar. So, Omerle Yimei, Kol Yimei, the Rabbos Mitzorah Muskar. So Rava says, the Shiluach. So Rava says, yeah, but the difference is when it comes to sending the fellow out of the camp, it says, Kol Yimei, all of the days, which, so all, Kol being inclusive, comes to include even a Mitzora Muskar needs to be sent out of the camps. So however, when it comes to, um, however, when it comes to Priya Ufrima, Rava will argue that it says, Bo in him, i.e. Mitzora Muchlat, not a Mitzora Muskar. Okay, Tiglachas v'tzipor in my time of low. And when it comes to, uh, so the Mishnah had said, right, that uh, getting a haircut, right, re- shaving off all your hair and the requirement to bring these birds, that is specifically by Mitzorah Mukhla, but not by Mitzorah Muskar. The Katani, as we learn in our Mishnah, it mean Tor Mitoch Esker, the Tor Mitoch Hechlit. That there's no difference between somebody who becomes tower after quarantining versus somebody who becomes tower after certainly being a mitzora elatiglachas vitziporim, because right, right, uh, the only difference is that the fellow who was certainly a mitzora was diagnosed with mitzora us mitzoraism. So then, um, in that case, he needs to uh, shave his head and also bring fagel as birds when he's uh, tower. On Rabbi the pasuk says v'yatzakoyin amuchutz lamachne. That the coin goes outside of the camp, vine nirpa nega tsaras, and then he and, and and lo and behold, this fill this fellow is healed. We should try to tuluy birfuos, yotzesh in try to tuluy birfuos al biyamim. So this means that when it comes to the to the um, 
when it comes to the to the to the shaving your head and offering these birds, it's somebody who has to be healed, i.e., only by a fellow who's mitzora mus muchlat, not a mitzora musker. All right, what do you want me to tell you? All right, so we'll hold it over here. That was taka daf ches or mesech megillah. Kind of a technical daf over here, mesech the daf test mesech the megillah. We learned some interesting uh, little tidbit. <laughs> Tidbits and a few different Mishnayas about Hamud or Ano, Michavir, a fellow, says that he's not going to get any benefit from his friend. Um, we talked about, right, some of you have seen a few times, in Ben Adarm, Lin Adavis, a nether, when a fellow says, I'm going to bring a Korban as opposed to an Adav, when he says, I'm going to bring this animal as a Korban. The Nafkamina is, do you have to bring a follow up if, if something happens to the original? If he says, I'm going to bring an, uh, a Korban, so then yes, he has to bring a follow up. If he says, I'm going to bring uh, this animal, so then he does not need to uh, do a follow up. All right. Then we got into Zav land, right? We said that the only difference between a Zav who sees Ziva twice versus three times, so is that when you see Ziva, right, after twice you become Tommy, but when you see Ziva a third time, then you have to bring a Corbin. And we brought two proofs in order to uh, understand this. There was Reb Simoy who says, that, well, one puzzle says Ziva twice, the other puzzle says Ziva three times, which teaches us that when you say Ziva twice, um, you become Tame. When you say the third time, you now have to bring a Corbin. Then there was also a Brisa that says, that says Mizovo. Right? Mizovo. That there will be an atonement from the Zab, which is like a Mizovo, the Mem is minimizing, to say that, um, um, to say that only some Zavs have to bring a Corbin and get atonement, i.e. Um, a Zav who sees Ziva three times. We then moved on comparing a um, Mitzorah, who's a Mitzorah who's, who's finished quarantine, right? Who's finished quarantining versus a Mitzorah who has finished um, actual, uh, being like an actual uh, Mitzorah. So he said that the difference is when you have Mitzorah who is just kind of quarantining, he doesn't have to make his hair wild and rend his garments as opposed to Mitzorah who is actually Mitzorah does. As well as when they become Tor, a Mitzorah who is a proper Mitzorah, so he has to bring um, um, uh, birds and he also has to um, shave his head. We then asked, uh, how do we know that a Mitzorah um, 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 uh, Musker does not need to make his hair wild and uh, rend his garments. So we saw two opinions. We saw the opinion of uh, Shmuel Bar Yitzchak, who says that um, that when it says by Vichibes Begadu Vitoher, that Vitoher means that he's now or he's retroactively um, Tahor from Prima, Pria, Pria, and Frima, right, from making your hair. Wild and rending your garments. Rabbi had a problem with that, and instead he learned he learns out from the pasuk of the chibes blood. Of, um, sorry, from the pasuk of that tzurash or bo anega that the that the fellow who the tzurash is in him, i.e. something that's based on him, um, needs priya <coughs> ufrima, i.e. when he's a proper uh, uh, a that uh, needs to be healed from his tzurash as opposed. To a mitzvah muskal, which is based on time, he just needs to have some time without seeing any more uh, tzaras, uh, and then and then um, he'll be all right. Friends, that was the Ches of Masechet Megillah. Hope you enjoyed. Peace out.